is really weighted and really, really nice. So far, this is the most luxurious mascara I've ever tried. This component is very reminiscent to the makeup of yesteryear, and it's actually really well done. I think it's a beautiful component. Hi, my name is Michelle. Today, I'm gonna play with a bunch of brand new Pat McGrath products. Oh, I pretty much have a full face here. So I'm excited to create a look today with some of these items that have been sitting around in my collection for far, far too long. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, I have a brand new foundation here from Pat McGrath. You might have seen my first impressions of a Pat McGrath foundation previously. If you missed that video, I'll link that down below as well. Check down in the description box for all the related content, any of the information that you might have questions about. If anything's missing, of course, feel free to ask me. I'm always here to help. I did try. Sorry if you can hear my dog snoring right behind you. He's a really cute little Shih Tzu and I love him. He's elderly and I am not, <laughs> he likes to sleep a lot and it's hard for him to breathe. So he snores when he breathes even when he's awake. <laughs> Anyhow, I have tried the Pat McGrath foundation before, but let's see, where is it? The foundation that I got, you can see, I've tried to make it work. It's, ooh, it's really, really dark for me. It was very, very hard to pick a shade on the computer. <laughs> and at the time that I selected this, I was a little bit darker as well. I was still in my summertime shade, but there's not this much of a difference between my summer and my winter shade. I don't get quite this dark. So I think this is just far, far too dark. And I believe this is in the shade 14, as well as the concealer LM14. So neither of these worked for me because they're just too dark. So thought I would try again. So here's the shade I picked it up in. I picked this up when it was for 45% off here recently when she had that super, super long sale towards the end of the year, the end of 2022. So I got this for 45% off, which makes me happy. But I'm going to go ahead and get started with the foundation and then we'll work into a lot of the really fun, beautiful color products. Ooh, this is beautiful. This looks a lot closer to my skin tone. Okay. What shade did I say I got? Um, oh, I got light medium 10. I thought I got eight. I think eight might've been too yellow. I got light medium 10. I will say that I'm not very pleased with the Pat McGrath shade range and the undertones that are available within those shades. It's just, it's too few and far between. So, so finding a foundation that works for me with their shade matcher has proven to be quite a challenge. <laughs> So let's hope that this one will work out nicely. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and shake it. And I'm gonna try the foundation without any primer on because, um, yeah, just because. You okay, baby? Okay, so let me clip my hair back. Yeah, you know what they say about big hair. You know what they say about big hair here in Texas, right? <laughs> Anyhow, all right. So let's get you zoomed in and let's go ahead and jump into all this makeup. My face has already been pre-moisturized and it's had plenty of time to soak in. Now, I see that I do have a sample here of the Divine Skin Rose 001. I was reading the ingredients on this and it says derived from 92% naturally derived ingredients. Well, that's all fine and good, but first of all, that leaves 8% synthetic. And just because something's naturally derived doesn't mean that it's good for you. So I don't really know, I don't really know about trying this stuff. It says you're supposed to shake it and then apply it. I think I'm gonna pass on this. I don't wanna put this on my skin. All right, 
I am going to go in with some foundation though. Maybe I should do my eyes first, but I don't, I don't like to put on my foundation after my eyeshadow is on. I just, I feel like it makes it really hard for me to get my eye look right like that. Let's go in with the jumbo base. I'm gonna go in with my jumbo base. Mini base. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's early, okay? I need some more coffee. Let me get my brain working before I start trying to talk to you and say all the wrong things. Oftentimes it's right in my head, but it doesn't come out right. <laughs> okay, here we go. First use. I'm gonna do two pumps, might have been a lot, but I do have some things that I want to cover, so. And I, I apologize for the shadows and the terrible lighting. Not only did my um, extra lighting start to malfunction a few days ago, and I haven't replaced it yet, but also it's a very, very gloomy day. We've got like a winter storm that has taken over the central part of America and it is impacting us here, even in Texas. And this looks like it's a little bit too peachy, but I might be able to make it work. And since I don't have a concealer that matches and I'm only doing Pat McGrath products today, I'm gonna take my foundation all the way up to under my eyes gently. And I'm just gonna do a light coverage today. I don't really have any um, important plans, just some day-to-day -day things. Okay, those two pumps didn't quite cover all of my face. As you can see here, there is like some areas still missing some product. So let me add another half a pump. I do really, really like the way this foundation lays on the skin. It was hard to really be a judge of it when I tried that first foundation because the color was so off that it just makes it really hard for me to have a good first impression of the product. And so that's why I wanted to try it again. Kind of a bummer that I couldn't return that foundation, you know. Pat McGrath, the website is not very helpful in their customer service department. Not only do they never reply to your email response, I mean, ne not only do they never respond by email, in my experience, but Dealing with their shipping and everything is just too much of a hassle. And then they, I think they even charge you like a restock fee or something. Okay, I'm gonna build up a little bit more here on my lower cheeks area. Try to avoid my marionette lines a little bit. All right. There we go. Um, I would say that the coverage, now that I can tell, I feel like the, let's start over. <laughs> I feel like the color is a pretty good match. It has just the slightest hint of peach, but not too much. Once it sh like once it spreads out, it's so barely peach that it actually just helps to tamp down my freckles brownness a little bit. It provides a little bit, like it neutralizes the brown of my freckles just a tad bit. They're not as gray as they normally appear through most foundations. So I like that my freckles look more of like a beige as opposed to a gray through this foundation. So that's a big plus right there. I don't really like how it's not providing any coverage here on my spots, but we're gonna move on. We're just gonna let that ride, okay? If I had been wise, I would have gotten the concealer too, but I wasn't really a fan, like I wore it 
and although the color matched the foundation that I had tried in that original video, I felt like this just creased too much and I didn't want to buy another one in the right shade because I don't think it's my favorite, uh, I don't think it's my favorite concealer formula. So I didn't want to replace it and try it again. Although I should have for 45% off as opposed to if I'm ever going to do it again in the future, you know, a lesser value of savings, a lesser savings. So, you know, maybe I should have just bought it and gotten the right one. Kind of wish I would have now, but whatever. Let's move on. Okay, so there's that. Also, oh, I have, I also have a new Sephora product here that I need to unbox. Okay, I do feel like this product has been opened. Let's just hope not, okay? I'm tired of the bullshit in the post office. Back to into my fucking products and shit. It looks perfect, I think. Okay, good. This is my most recent Pat McGrath item that I've purchased. Here is the cute little limited edition Lunar New Year under eye setting powder. <laughs> if you're not new to my channel, you probably already know I have one of these in my current panning project. I'll leave that video down below if you've missed it and you want to watch it. But the problem with this pow with this powder is that I've just gotten so light that this medium shade, this is medium, this medium shade is a bit too deep for my skin tone. I feel like it just deepens up my foundations a little bit now that I'm really, really pale. <laughs> so I thought I would get a lighter one and get a limited edition packaging so that way I'd be able to tell the difference between one and the other so I, I loved that she just added a little red thing on it like I I found that helpful because this only came in one shade Ooh, can you see with the lighting let me try to cover it oh look at that so cute Ooh, look at it with the pretty little red letters Okay, so this is the shade that this came in. Ooh, okay, brand new. I've never used it. And when I first saw this online, the translucent one, I thought that it was going to be way too bright. But I want to see if this will just be more of like a clear powder. So that's why I purchased it. And I love that it is in a limited edition colorway so that when I've got both of these on my makeup vanity, I can easily tell which one is which. And I'm sorry for the terrible glare there from the lighting and all, but uh, I don't I don't need to use this brush. Hold on. I need to wash my face brushes. My face brushes are a little dirty. Okay, do I even? Yeah, I'm gonna use this brush, even though this is not the best brush for this. First touch. Like, literally, I haven't even photographed this. Okay, there's the difference. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Not only can I see the difference in the viewfinder, but I can see the difference instantly here in the mirror. It, like, you can't even see my pores anymore. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Yeah. All right, so this is how, this is gonna be fabulous. I'm so glad that I got this. This is how these powders are gonna work for me now. This is gonna become my under eye powder, and this one will become the rest of my face powder because it is a little bit dark for under my eyes, but it's not too dark for my face. So that will also benefit my 
See, look at how dark that made my face. Do you see? Like you can see how dark that is. It adds a lot of color. And there we go, see? You can see the difference. I can see it on the viewfinder. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but I can see it on the viewfinder. It's not quite as noticeable in person here in the mirror. I've got the mirror right there in front of you. Um, I mean, next to you. <laughs> it's not as obvious in person, but it is very visible here where the line is of the medium shade as opposed to the translucent shade. So that being said, I do feel like it was a good thing that I got the bright one. So I really like that. However, I feel like this though is going to end up pushing my other powder out of the way. So it looks like I've got some updates to do for my panning project. So that's going to be coming up next. But let's move on past the powder. I'm very happy with that purchase. I really, really am glad that I got it. Money well spent, in my opinion. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next product. All right. Now, I'm going to wait. I have... I have three new Pat McGrath blush palettes to play with here. If this doesn't say I love blush, I don't know what does. <laughs> so I'm gonna save the blush selection until after we see what the eye look turns out like. And same with the lips. But I do have a mascara that I get to try for the very first time, so I'm super excited about that. And my first impressions of this quad right here, the Celestial Divinity Quad. I, <sighs> confession time. I have had this palette, this quad, in my collection for two years and two months now. <laughs> I have owned this for two years and two months. I personally love blue eyeshadow, so I'm not sure what my hesitation has been for this palette. I've been so intimidated. I'm not usually intimidated by blue eyeshadow. <laughs> so I don't know what's going on with that, but I felt like today is the day to play with it. So I'm really excited to play with this palette. Here's the name of it. Okay, this should be pretty straightforward. Let me hold it upright. This should be pretty straightforward. It should be pretty easy to create a look with this. I'm gonna go in with this into the crease, this on the lid, this in the inner corner. No, wait. <laughs> I'm gonna go this in the crease, deepen it up with this, and go with that in the inner corner. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. No, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in with, we'll figure it out okay, along the way together, okay? I don't, I really don't know how people plan their look in advance. I'm not really good at planning. I'm more of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of girl. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna start off with a fluffy little blender. This is a detailed blender because I have small eyes and I'm gonna go into this one satin that we have here. This is gonna be most of my crease shade right there. First touch, can't believe I didn't photograph it yet. Should have. Whoa, that is deep. Whoa, that was a beautiful shade, but I did not see that coming. I should have. <laughs> that was an amateur move right there. That's okay, we can save this here. Wow, I'm gonna do two looks with this palette just because I wanna see you know what I can do with it. There's a start of one eye. I'm gonna just round it out a little bit because I don't like that super pointy kind of effect for the deep color. Here we go. All right. 
That got intense quick, real quick. I really don't know what I'm doing here, but let's just, let's see if we can blend this out a little bit. Just soften it up. All right. So that did soften the intensity a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with this gray minky shade here. Should I? Yeah, what else am I gonna do? And there's only four shades here, so it makes it kind of hard. Ooh, that's a beautiful color. Oh my God. Okay, so I kind of regret the shape that I did on the upper eye a little bit, but that's a beautiful, beautiful lid shade. Oh my God. Okay, that's really pretty. We're gonna do a little bit of an avant-garde look on this side, apparently. Okay, now I'm gonna take the same shade with a pencil. Okay, that's what it looks like on the lower lash line, as opposed, that's the lid shade. This lid shade here is on my lower lash line now. So now I'm gonna go in with the same pencil and just do the back edge of the eye with that deep shade and connect it to the bottom. And over to the top edge. <laughs> My dog. my god that shade mixes with this deep maroon so beautifully wow are you seeing what that did there i don't know if it's really capturing the true essence of the shade that that created together but that is just oh my god whoa okay here we go here's like, this is really a really pretty look by itself like that. I actually like that eye a lot. I like that a lot. I'm going to add just a little bit of the blue, though, because I do want to use all four shades for each look. And this is creamy, so I don't think anything's going to, like, flake off onto me. Where do we want to put the blue? Do we want it in the front, in the middle, or in the back? I think we're gonna go within the back. Just put that here on this back half. Wow. Whoa. That's what, no, I'm, I'm putting it all over. <laughs> I love that blue, I want it everywhere. Oh my God, look at that blue. Oh, oh yes. Oh, give me that blue, yes. Oh my God, oh my God. That's the look. It is a little, it is a little editorial, <laughs> but okay. So let me go in with eyeliner and then I'll wait till the end and we'll try the mascara on both sides. I'm going to go in with a black eyeliner. I, I don't have, yeah, I should have gotten a Pat McGrath eyeliner, but I didn't. So I'm going to use my KVD one. It's brand new. I just recently opened it up.
that's amazing. Wow. Okay, girl. <laughs> wow, okay, can you see the shift in this shade? Whoa. Okay, so it's my understanding that Pat does not have any brow products in her line yet, so I'm gonna go with my current favorite brow duo. I love that so much. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. There's the first look. Let me know what you think. I really like it. Oh my God. Okay, let's move on to the next eye. Now for this one, I wanna do something a little bit more everyday wearable, if that's possible, with this palette. So. I'm gonna go in with a really, really fluffy brush. Am I gonna start off the same way? No. Okay, I'm gonna take this gray shade, this kind of gray minky shade on a very, very fluffy brush. Okay, so it's, it's hardly picking up because it's very fluffy and it's a satin. But I am going to Fluff that into the lid, I mean into the crease, just for a little bit of something in the crease. Okay. That's really pretty in the crease. We're gonna go with a soft, more like wearable look for this one. Okay, but I do wanna take I'm gonna take a little bit more of this gray here and I'm gonna pack that on the lid on this back half. This color, this shade really looks differently depending on what kind of a brush you use it with. Do you see that? That's the same shade both in the crease and on the outer edge with different brushes. So I really like the way that looks. All right. <laughs> My dog. Next, I'm gonna go in with this really beautiful shade here. And I'm gonna take this on the front half of the lid. Just really soft and pretty. So nice. Wow, I cannot believe these two looks came out of the same palette. I'm not done. <laughs> All right. I need like the softest, little, smallest blender. No, that's too fluffy. I'm gonna go in with this little flat definer into the burgundy shade here. And I'm taking it on the top edge, like I'm, I'm going straight down like that. We're gonna use this a little bit as a liner here on the bottom, mostly, and then up into this corner just a little bit. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Oh, that's pretty, do you see that? Just 
going to slowly bring that over. Ooh, I like that a lot. Real pretty. Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. All right. Next, I'm going to go in with this really beautiful blue on one of my smaller pencils. And I'm going to put this here on the front part. This is going to be our little, like, fun pop right here. Okay, just a little something fun. Without getting too wild. Okay. All right. take an even tinier pencil and I'm going to go in now with that bright shade and just try to add a little bit of lightness here because although I don't want to take away the blue I do want a, just a peak of some brighter here on the front part of the blue okay how do we like that I think I like that a lot and I feel like that's the look okay so here's the other one. Let me show you the look. We did use all of the shades for this. I don't know if that helped at all. Okay, so here's the look. Let me know what you think. I, <laughs> I cannot believe both of these looks came from the same quad. But... That's the Pat McGrath artistry. That's it. They're just, her formula is so easy to work with. I love it so much. Okay. I can't believe I waited so long to play with that quad. Let me take my hair down. All right. Let's now, let's do the mascara. I'm going to do the mascara with no, without curling my lashes. Cause I want to just see what the mascara does all on its own. I'm so excited. I'm having so much fun. I, I really needed this good time because I've been feeling really sad lately. <laughs> and so I needed this cheer me up. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I'm going to go in with the mascara for the very first time. I'm really excited. I'm also kind of nervous because I have really high expectations of this mascara. Ooh, this is so beautiful. This is really weighted and really, really nice. So far, this is the most luxurious mascara I've ever tried. The most expensive one. This is the year that I'm going to try all the mascaras that I've ever wanted to try. Okay, all the high-end formulas, all the mid-range ones that I've ever been curious about. Ooh, smells nice. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. a little bit of a like a drier wet formula like a wet formula that's been sitting out for a couple weeks already and has perfected that's kind of like the immediate feel of it in my opinion let me use my larger mirror so I can really see up close all right I do really like the separation that it gives there's one coat I did a lower lash line Okay, there's one coat of the Pat McGrath Dark Star Mascara. Let me know what you think of it. I don't know, it's gonna be really hard to see up against my lashes on this side because the eyeshadow's so dark, but that's what the mascara looks like. I like it so far. It kind of is giving me Ilia vibes, except a more impactful formula. <sighs> looks like I got the tiniest bit of fallout from the eyeshadow. I didn't really tap off, so I'm going to try to clear that off. Yeah. All right. 
Okay, so let me see the other side and see if you can even see the impact of the mascara without curling my lashes. So there's the mascara on both eyes. <laughs> okay, let's pick a blush. I'm gonna use this blush, finally. It's really, really beautiful. All the people were talking about this packaging and stuff, I feel like they were completely clueless. This is a beautiful little component very reminiscent of the olden days makeup that came in this exact kind of cardboard ca packaging. Same weight. This is actually more heavy than the packaging from yonder years. So this has a more luxurious feel to it than the original style of packaging that came out like this that like say my grandmother used to use that I used to see on her vanity and stuff when I was like four years old in the early, early, early 80s. So this is literally a throwback of this is literally a throwback and a reminiscent effect. So those that are like, oh, this should have been plastic, it should have had a mirror, it's so it's so cheap, blah, 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 for $60, this and that. Girl, no. What? You obviously, people that are talking like that obviously don't know much about the makeup industry and about product and, you know, running a business or anything like that, or history, the history of makeup. So this component is very reminiscent to the makeup of yesteryear, and it's actually really well done. I think it's a beautiful component. I had no problem opening mine because anybody that tried to like take the tape off, and the brightest thing to do is to take a little razor blade or a scissors right along the actual tape on the seam. And then all that does is separates the tape and you have a perfect opening. Now, I did get this on sale, I think 30% off of the $60 price. So I got a little bit of a discount, but you can get a better discount if you could find this at TJ Maxx. They currently have this. I've seen this in my local TJ Maxx for $14.99. Of course, the packaging was wrecked. It had been opened. The product was damaged. So, you know, I mean, that's what happens when you buy stuff at TJ Maxx. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> but I'm really excited to check this product out. Let me pick out some sort of a blush brush here if I have one at all clean. I don't really have anything clean left. I need to wash all my face brushes. Um, yeah, I need to wash my face brushes. I wiped my brush off as best as I could on a microfiber cloth. So I pretty much have all the residue of pigment off, but the brush looks very pigmented because I had used a pigmented blush. All right, I wanna go in with, I wanna do this really pretty pink shimmery on this side and then this deeper one on this side. So let's see how those go. Pretty. Ooh, very, very powdery. Lots of stuff kicked up. Here we go. Oh my God, the formula is beautiful. Oh my God. That is so nice. Very pigmented. skin it's really beautiful I do like that a lot it's got a little bit of a sheen if I had bronzer on like to complete the look but I really like that I think that's pretty okay let's try the deeper one on this other side see like it does whoa it picks up honey whoa here we go it's gonna be a little scary I already regret doing that <laughs> Carefully, okay. Carefully tap it out first. Ooh, so pigmented. That is beautiful. I love a very pigmented blush. Oh my God, I'm living for that. 
Let me blend it out so I don't freak y'all out. Hold on. This is giving me Sherub cheeks. What? Back in the Sherub days kind of blush look. Okay. She pigmented, honey. <laughs> Let's tone that down a little bit. I went a little ham. Not only do natural hair brushes pick up better, but uh that is a very pigmented formula. Let me just tamp this down a little bit. Wow, I look like I got punched in the face. Not gonna lie, that wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> Hold on. We're gonna tamp it down with the translucent powder. Let's see if it helps. Actually, I feel like maybe the one that's skin tone would be better. I'm gonna tamp it down. My dog is snoring so loud. They're both so asleep. I'm gonna tamp this down just a little bit with the powder that is a little bit closer to my skin tone. There we go. All right. Okay, that blush is intense, all right? That one was a bit much. I learned my lesson on that one, okay? There's my first impression of that blush is, whoa. My first impression of that blush is, whoa, Nelly. <laughs> okay. That super deep one is no joke. She pigmented. We're over here still trying to work with it here. <laughs> okay, that's better. It's getting better, little by little. Okay. So they're not the same. They don't even look the same at all. But let's move on because I'm ready to wrap this up. I do want to try, I do want to go in with this lipstick here, not a red. This may or may not go well with this look, but this is the one that I'm gonna put on. So here we go. Ooh. I'm, not, I'm not ready for that yet. I, I don't think that color is gonna go good with this look at all. Okay, I'm actually, I'm gonna veto the new lipstick yet, okay? I know this is supposed to be a full face of try-on, but I'm not ready to open those lipsticks up yet and use them. I'm gonna put on one from the Bridgerton collection that I think will go good with the pink blush that I've got going on my face. All right. So try to disregard this blush. Let me just make my face even out a little bit so you can take me seriously, as uh, seriously as you can with all this blush going on here. What am I doing over here? Okay. The cheeks are a little much, okay? I went a little ham on the blush, but let me share with you my thoughts on the rest of the products now that we've completed the full face. The foundation, I feel like this is a win. I love the way that it looks on my skin. I already know that it wears well all day long. Um, I think that the shade is just right. I finally got a good shade match, so I'm really happy about that. I think it looks really close to my skin color, so I like that a lot. The new powder, I really like this powder in the translucent shade. This is really, really good for my under eyes. I love that she came out with the limited edition packaging because I will easily be able to spot the difference between my old one and my new one. So I wish that all of the shades came in different colors so that if you bought two different ones for different parts of the face, you'd be able to easily distinguish them without having to open it each time. So that's, that's my one suggestion to you, Pat. <laughs> okay, so Pat, since I know that you take my suggestions to heart, there's my suggestion to you. Label the different shades with different coloring, okay? Because that way those of us that buy multiples can tell which one is which. I know you take my suggestions to heart because you gave me that matte palette that I was asking for, girl. I appreciate you, boo. I love that. It's on the way to me. Spoiler, that palette's on the way to me. Anyhow, all right, next. Um, the Dark Star Mascara. I like the mascara. I think it's fine. It's fine enough. I think it's overpriced. Well, it's not overpriced. I mean, it's priced within 
her brand's price range. It's a nice mascara. If you want to have a Pat McGrath mascara and you're looking at this Pat McGrath mascara, I say go for it. If you're into super, super dramatic eyelashes, maybe not though. But if you just want like a really beautiful, long and slightly voluminous defined lash, this is a good one. Hair on my nose, my nose on my hair. What? I don't know. Okay. And the quad. I really, really love this quad. I cannot believe it took me so long to, <laughs> I cannot believe it took me so long to create a look with this. I was so intimidated and for nothing. I love the variety of looks that you can get out of this. This would be a great like everyday palette for just these two shades together. And then you can add these two to pop it, you know, to add some pop and oomph for when you're gonna go from like say the office to go out afterwards. This is a great palette for that. I really, really like this, like from a day to night look. Yeah, I really, really love this quad. I can't believe it took me so long. She's officially been broken in. All right. And for the Bridgerton blush, I think this product is absolutely beautiful and lovely. The packaging is spot on with the old fashioned packaging of decades gone by. So those that have complaints about this packaging are obviously probably too young to recall seeing this on vanities in decades gone by. This is a very, very nice throwback to, it's a nice ode to those makeup items that I remember sitting on my grandma's vanity. So I'm really happy to have this. I think it's beautiful. Now I do want to say I need to take it easy and try to learn how to use this very, very pigmented blush because even for me, a blush lover who likes to, who doesn't mind clown cheeks on a daily basis, um, who doesn't mind wearing clown cheeks to, you know, the grocery store or wherever. Um, it's a little bit much even for me. I went in a little ham, so I need to learn how to use this specific product to where I can make it look a little bit more wearable. Um, and as for the lipsticks, I probably should have gotten more of like a nudie nude shade so that I could have worn it with some of these other palettes because these are all like very pink and red. So I might need to pick up a new Pat McGrath lipstick. We shall see if that will be coming down the pipeline. But that's all I've got for you today. Let me know what you think of the looks that I created. Let me know. Do you like the dramatic look better? Do you like the more everyday wearable look better? Do you like them both? Would you wear either of these looks? Have you seen anybody create looks like this? I haven't really watched any, I haven't really watched anybody use this quad if I remember correctly. So I'm really happy that I finally checked this quad out. I think it's really beautiful. I'm so happy with the colors. I'm so happy with the results of each of the looks. I am not even sure which one is my favorite because this is a really, really beautiful everyday neutral glam eye, but this is a really fun editorial look and you know I'm a sucker for blue. That's why I even put the little fun pop of blue right there in the front. So let me know which look you like the best. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on the looks, any of these products, the Pat McGrath brand. Even if we disagree, I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. I'd love for you to share your thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section. So I look forward to chatting with you there. And yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please be sure to click the thumbs up button. It really does help my channel out so much. And make sure you're subscribed so we can hang out again. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye.